The sack of Thebes took place in 663 BC in the city of Thebes at the hands of the Neo-Assyrian Empire under King Ashurbanipal, then at war with the Kushite 25th dynasty of Egypt under Tantamani, during the Assyrian conquest of Egypt. After a long struggle for the control of the Levant which had started in 705 BC, the Kushites had gradually lost control of Lower Egypt and, by 665 BC, their territory was reduced to Upper Egypt and Nubia. Helped by the unreliable vassals of the Assyrians in the Nile Delta region, Tantamani briefly regained Memphis in 663 BC, killing Necho I of Say in the process. On learning of these events, Ashurbanipal aided by Necho's son, Sumphikai and his Karian mercenaries, returned to Egypt with a large army and comprehensively defeated the Kushites near Memphis. The army then proceeded south to Thebes, which quickly fell as Tantamani had already fled to Lower Nubia. The city was thoroughly sacked, its inhabitants were deported and much booty taken back to Assyria, including two large obelisks. The sack of Thebes was a major event in the history of the city and of ancient Egypt in general. It effectively marks the end of the 25th dynasty of Egypt as Tantamani lost his main foothold in Egypt. The Kushites were permanently expelled within a decade of the fall of Thebes as none of Tantamani's successors would ever manage to retake territories north of Elephantine. Durably weakened, Thebes peacefully submitted itself less than six years after the sack to a large fleet sent by Semtik to control Upper Egypt as he freed himself from the Assyrian vassalage. The sack thus permitted the rise of the 26th dynasty, the end of the Third Intermediate Period and the beginning of the Late Period. The sack seems to have reverberated more generally throughout the ancient Near East, it is notably mentioned in the Book of Nahum, as an example of the destruction and horror that can befall a city. Chapter 1, Background In the late 8th century BC, Egypt and Nubia were united and ruled by the Kushite pharaohs of the 25th dynasty of Egypt. The Neo-Assyrian Empire was already extending its influence over the Levant at the same period, and in the spring of 720 BC PA or perhaps Shibite who fought and lost a first battle against the Assyrians near Raphadot the situation did not change owing to the Assyrian hegemony until circa 705 BC, when the death of Sargon II led to revolts against the Assyrians throughout their empire. Shibaitku's successor Shabaka seized the occasion and returned to the Levantine coast, where he was free to roam until circa 701 BC when Sennacherib was finally able to assemble an army and win over the Egyptians at Elt. Following these events, Shibaitku and his successor Tahaka enjoyed a period of peace and managed to increase their influence once more over the Levant and along the Phoenician coast. This situation went unchecked until circa 679 BC at which point Esarhaddon led a military campaign up to the Brook of Egypt and then in Phoenicia circa 676 BC. The results of these activities was to put the Levant firmly into Assyrian hands. However, by this time Esarhaddon had realized that a conquest of Lower Egypt was necessary in order to permanently reduce the Kushite threat on the Levant. In March of 673 BC, Esarhaddon sent a large military force to Egypt, possibly via the Wadi Tumilat but was defeated by the Egyptians under Pemu, then ruler of Heliopolis for the Kushites. Esarhaddon returned two years later in the summer of 671 BC and after a number of battles, was able to take Memphis, wound Tahaka, capture his brother and his son Nezanuret, heir to the throne. Tahaka's remaining son, Atlanasa, was then likely too young to reign and another brother of Tahaka, Tantamani would ultimately ascend the throne. As a consequence, the Kushites were temporarily expelled from Lower Egypt, which passed under the control of Assyrian vassals, in particular Necho I in Say. In spite of these successes for the Assyrians, the Egyptian vassals in the Delta region were unruly and Taharka was attempting to return to Lower Egypt. Esarhaddon launched a novel military expedition circa 669 BC but died that year, allowing Taharka to retake Memphis and, finally, the Delta region in late 668 BC. In 667 BC, Esarhaddon's heir Ashurbanipal decided to re-establish the Assyrian dominion over Egypt, invading the land in October of that year and going up to Thebes where they defeated Taharka while simultaneously quelling a rebellion in the Delta. Soon after, 
Tahaka might have won some victory in Thebes which allowed him to keep control of Upper Egypt. In Lower Egypt, Necho was reinstated vassal king of Say in spite of his betrayal. The situation did not change until 664 BC with Tahaka's death. Chapter 2, The Year 663 BC Chapter 2 Section 1, Tantamani's Failed Reconquest Tahaka was succeeded by his brother Tantamani at his death. Tantamani immediately launched a massive military campaign aiming once more at uniting Egypt under the rule of the 25th dynasty. His army travelled north, stopping at Napota, Elephantine, Thebes and Heliopolis fortifying both in 664 BC. Tantamani arrived in Memphis in April 663 BC and killed Necho I during the ensuing fight near the city. Tantamani then proceeded north and received the capitulation of some but not all Delta kinglets, then expulsed the remaining Assyrian troops from Egypt while Necho's young son Semtik managed to flee to Assyria via Palestine. Chapter 2 Section 2, Sack The Assyrians soon returned to Egypt. Together with Semtik I's army, which comprised Carian mercenaries, they fought a pitched battle in North Memphis, close to the Temple of Isis, between the Serapium and Abu Sir. Tantamani was defeated and fled to Upper Egypt, but just forty days after the battle, Ashurbanipal's army arrived in Thebes. Tantamani had already left the city for Kipkipi, a location that remains uncertain but might be Komombo, some two hundred kilometers south of Thebes. The city itself was conquered smashed a flood storm, and heavily plundered. The event is not mentioned in Egyptian sources but is known from the Assyrian annals, which report that the inhabitants were deported. The Assyrians took a large booty of gold, silver, precious stones, clothes, horses, fantastic animals, as well as two obelisks covered in electrum weighting 2.500 talents. This city, the whole of it, I conquered it with the help of Asher and Ishtar. Silver, gold, precious stones, all the wealth of the palace, rich cloth, precious linen, great horses, supervising men and women, two obelisks of splendid electrum, weighing 2,500 talents, the doors of temples I tore from their bases and carried them off to Assyria. With this weighty booty, I left Thebes. Against Egypt and Cush I have lifted my spear and shown my power. With full hands I have returned to Nineveh, in good health. The sack of Thebes was a momentous event that reverberated throughout the ancient Near East. It is mentioned in the book of Nahum chapter 3 to 8 to 10. Art thou better than populous know, that was situate among the rivers, that had the waters round about it, whose rampart was the sea, and her wall was from the sea? Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength, and it was infinite, Put and Lubim were thy helpers. Yet was she carried away, she went into captivity, her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets, and they cast lots for her honourable men, and all her great men were bound in chains. And a prophecy in the book of Isaiah 23-5 refers to the sack as well. Just as my servant Isaiah has gone stripped and barefoot for three years, as a sign and portent against Egypt and Cush, so the king of Assyria will lead away stripped and barefoot the Egyptian captives and Cushite exiles, young and old, with buttocks bared, to Egypt's shame. Those who trusted in Cush and boasted in Egypt will be dismayed and put to shame. Chapter 3, Aftermath Chapter 3 Section 1, Cushite Kingdom of Napota Concurrently or soon after the sack, the Cushite army withdrew from Egypt in large numbers, a momentous event that was still remembered some two hundred years later and gave rise to Herodotus' story about 240,000 Egyptian deserters settling in Nubia. Tantamani's fate after the loss of Thebes is not entirely clear, he seems to have ruled for some time as king of Cush, as suggested by a relief of him in Jebel Barkal. Indirect evidence points to a continued Cushite presence in Upper Egypt between 661 BC and 656 BC, monuments show that the Thebans continued to acknowledge the sovereignty of Tantamani until as late as 656 BC, although the actual extent of his power is uncertain. At the same time, 
the supreme authority in Thebes seems to have been in the hands of Menchumhat and his wife Shepanupit II. By 653 BC, Tantamani's successor at Lanasa was on the throne and he reigned solely over Nubia, with his seat of power in Napata, starting the so called Napatan period of Nubia. Although Atlanasa and his successors styled themselves as Egyptian pharaohs, none of them posed a serious threat to Egypt. After imposing his authority over Upper Egypt, Samphikai established a garrison on Elephantine and may have led a military campaign in Nubia. By the time of Samphik II, circa 590 BC the Egyptians had sacked Napota. Chapter 3 Section 2 End of the Assyrian Presence the Assyrians did not hold Thebes for long, already by 662 BC, one year after the sack, some Thebans were dating their documents as Patantamani's years of reign, suggesting that the Assyrians had already left the region. Around the time of the sack, Ashurbanipal was personally involved in two conflicts in Phoenicia, submitting Awad and Tyre. Soon after he participated in further campaigns against the Mani, the Elamites and the Medes, all between 665 BC and 655 BC, which might explain why he did not maintain an Assyrian presence in Thebes. Chapter 3 Section 3, Late Period of Egypt In the decade following the sack, the Assyrian influence in Egypt quickly waned as Samtikai managed not only to dominate the other kinglets of the Delta region but also freed himself from Assyrian vassalage. With Thebes' influence and outreach deeply weakened, Sumphik sent a strong military fleet to the city in 656 BC, and immediately received its submission. To affirm his control over the city, he had his daughter Nitocrisi adopted by Amenides II, who was not only the daughter of Tahaka but also the divine adoratress of Amun, then the pinnacle of the powerful priesthood of Amun in the city. Samtik then only had to secure Egypt's southern border by putting a garrison on Elephantine to submit the whole of Upper Egypt for himself. In 655 BC, Samtik turned against his Assyrian overlord aided once more by Ionian and Carian mercenaries and allied with Gigis of Lydia. He expelled the remaining Assyrians from Lower Egypt and pursued them as far as Ashdod. Ashurbanipal then deeply embroiled in war against the Elamites had no army to send to Egypt. In the span of seven years, Samtik had effectively united and freed Egypt, marking the beginning of the late period. Chapter 4, Sources Ida, Tormod, Heg, Thomas, Pierce, Richard Holton, Torok, Laslaw. Font Historiae Nubiorum Textual sources for the history of the Middle Nile region between the 8th century BC and the 6th century AD. Volume 1. From the 8th to the mid-5th century BC. Bergen, University of Bergen, Department of Classics. ISBN 82991411168. Herodotus. Euterpe. An Account of Egypt. Translated by G. C. Macaulay. Khan, Danal. The Assyrian Invasions of Egypt and the Final Expulsion of the Kushites. Student sur alt Egyptian Kultur. 34, 251-267. Sh. 25157757. Kendall, Timothy, Ahmed Mohammed, El Hassan. A Visitor's Guide to the Jebel Barkal Temples. The Nkam Jebel Barkal Mission. Khartoum, Sudan. Nubian Archaeological Development Organization. Torok, Laslaw. The Kingdom of Kush. Handbook of the Napatan Mmoitic Civilization. Handbook, Der Orientalistic. Abtilung 1. Na und Mittelier Osten. Leiden, E. J. Brill. ISBN 9789004104444. Rue, Georges. Ancient Iraq. London, Penguin Book. ISBN 978014012523.